Three American civil rights workers, Andrew Goodman, James Cheney, and Michael Schwerner, were shot at close range on the night of June 21, 1964. The murders were committed by members of the Mississippi White Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, the Neshoba County's Sheriff's Office, and the Philadelphia, Mississippi Police Department. The three had been working on the Freedom Summer campaign, attempting to register African Americans to vote. On June 21, 1964, Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner met at the Meridian Mississippi Council of Federated Organizations, or COFO, headquarters to prepare to leave for Longdale, Mississippi. Their goal was to investigate the destruction of the Mount Zion Church. Schwerner told COFO Meridian members to search for them if they were not back by 4 p.m. He said, if we're not back by then, start trying to locate us. After visiting Longdale, they decided to pass through Philadelphia and take Highway 19 to Meridian. Their station wagon had barely passed the Philadelphia city limits when one of its tires flatted and Deputy Sheriff Cecil Ray Price was there to arrest them for speeding. They were taken to the Neshoba County Jail a block from the courthouse. After their release at around 10 p.m., they were followed almost immediately by Deputy Price in his patrol car. Soon after, the civil rights workers left the city limits, headed south on State Highway 19. A lynch mob had been formed prior to this, consisting of Price and nine other men. Those that participated in the actual kidnapping and murders were Cecil Price, Alton Roberts, Jimmy Arledge, Jimmy Snowden, Billy Posey, James Jordan, and Horace Barnett. With the help from the Philadelphia City Police Department, the lynch mob eventually caught up with the civil rights worker's car and escorted them to a secluded road. Alton Roberts, a very large man with a short temper, shot both Goodman and Schwerner at point-blank range. He also shot Cheney in the head after James Jordan shot him in the abdomen. After the three men were shot, their bodies were quickly loaded into their station wagon and sent to Burridge's Old Jolly Farm, Dam, where they were buried. A Mount Zion Church state history marker reads, On June 21, 1964, voting rights activists James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner, who had come here to investigate the burning of Mount Zion Church, were murdered. Victims of a Klan conspiracy, their deaths provoked national outrage and led to the first successful federal prosecution of a civil rights case in Mississippi. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, enacted July 2nd, is a landmark piece of civil rights legislation in the United States that outlawed discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It ended unequal application of voter registration requirements and racial segregation in schools, at the workplaces, and by facilities that serve the general public. In 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his dynamic leadership of the civil rights movement and steadfast commitment to achieving racial justice through nonviolent action. 
King accepted the award in Oslo, Norway on behalf of the civil rights movement and pledged the prize money to the movement's continued development. At the age of 35, King became the youngest man and only the second African American to receive the prestigious award. Jimmy Lee Jackson was a civil rights protester who was shot and killed by Alabama State Trooper James Fowler in 1965. Jackson was unarmed. His death inspired the Selma to Montgomery marches, an important event in the American Civil Rights Movement. He was 26 years old. On the night of February 18th, 1965, approximately 500 organized a peaceful march to the Perry County Jail. They were met at the post office by a line of Marion City police officers, sheriffs, deputies, and Alabama State Troopers. Once the police began to attack the group, they fled. Jimmy Jackson, his mother, and 80-year-old grandfather hid in, in a nearby cafe but were discovered quickly. After beating his grandfather and mother to the ground, Jackson attempted to defend them and was subsequently shot twice in the abdomen. He fled the cafe amid blows from police clubs, collapsing in front of the bus station. He died eight days later. Malcolm X, born Malcolm Little, was an African-American Muslim minister and a human rights activist. To his admirers, he was a courageous advocate for the rights of blacks, a man who indicted white America in the harshest terms for its crimes against black Americans. He has been called one of the greatest and most influential African Americans in history. On February 21st, 1965, Malcolm X was preparing to address a crowd in a ballroom when a disturbance broke out. In the chaos, a man rushed forward and shot him once in the chest with a shotgun. Two other men also shot him with handguns an additional 11 times. He was pronounced dead shortly after arriving at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Two days later, Malcolm X's funeral was held in Har Harlem. It was attended by about 20,000 people. The 1965 Selma to Montgomery marches, also known as Bloody Sunday, and the two marches that followed, led to the passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, a landmark achievement of the 1960s American Civil Rights Movement. All three marches were attempts to walk for 54 miles along the highway from Selma to the Alabama state capital of Montgomery. The first march, initiated and directed by the Southern Christian Leadership Conference's Director of Direct Action, James Bevel, was strategized as a countermeasure to relieve the trauma and escalating anger caused by the killing of voting rights activist Jimmy Jackson. The first march ended with profound violence. About 600 people left Selma eastbound on U.S. Highway 80. When they attempted to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge, they found a wall of state troopers waiting for them. Seconds later, the troopers began to shove the marchers, which quickly became a brutal beating and gassing. As several demonstrators lay on the ground being attacked with clubs, troopers on horseback rode into the dispersing crowd. Overall, 17 marchers were hospitalized and the day nicknamed Bloody Sunday. Televised images of the brutal attack made headlines around the world. Two days later, the second march took place. 
also called Turnaround Tuesday. A call had been made for people around the country to bolster the march, and about 2,500 people participated. Unknown to most, the march would not go to Montgomery due to a federal district judge's restraining order, but would symbolically go to the Edmund Pettus Bridge and return to Selma. That evening, three white ministers who had come for the march were brutally beaten by members of the Ku Klux Klan. One of them, James Reeb, died of massive head injuries. A week after Reeb's death, the judge ruled in favor of the protesters and their march proceeded. Although nearly 8,000 people intended to participate, only 300 were permitted to make the entire trip. Martin Luther King Jr. led the marches and upon arrival to the Capitol gave his how long, not long speech. <laughs> 